I'm now joined by Rebecca Stevens. So, what teams will people know you from? Uh, Wakefield Panthers and uh, Sheffield Eagles, Sheffield Hillsborough Hawks women's team. And a, a bit more famous team than that. <laughs> uh, Great Britain. <laughs> there we go. How did you first get involved in sports? Well, I'd always loved uh, sports. I used to uh, sprint, uh, be a sprinter at school. Uh, and then we always had uh, ponies growing up till I was about 15. Um, we, we had ponies, so I was really involved with show jumping at local shows and, and things which I loved doing. And I suppose it prepared me for rugby because I got used to being thrown over fences and through <laughs> fences um, from, uh, you know, uh, ponies going 100 miles an hour and decided they didn't want to take that fence so uh, yeah that was um, uh, that was kind of my childhood so I was always active always sporty always outdoors and then uh, funnily enough the way I kind of came to rugby was that having um, sold my ponies uh, around 14 15 uh, I went to uh, badminton uh, practice after school and I was really looking for something else to get into to get fit the girl who I walked home with I met at badminton practice I walked home with her and she was going to rugby uh, practice and I didn't know anything about rugby at all I wasn't from a rugby league family a lot of the girls that I, I went on to play with were from you know traditional rugby league families their brothers played their dads played their uncle played uh, but that wasn't the case for me um, I had no idea I, in fact when I saw it on the TV I just used to think it was like a group of men <laughs> jumping <laughs> on top of each other and no idea at all what would be involved but I went along because I thought it might be a good way of uh, getting fit um, and I just absolutely fell in love with it so I really loved the physicality of it and I suppose the irony is that the the girl that introduced me to it um, she's left probably about a month or two after that because she didn't like the, <laughs> the physical know, side. It's funny you say that. Do you know how many people say that? They joined up with someone and they didn't really want to do it. And someone was so, oh, yeah, I'll do it because you want to do it. And they, yeah. five, six years later, they're still going and the mate, after one month, never, never came back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm very grateful to her because, you know, all the fantastic experiences rugby's given me over the years what was the first team you was at then so it was the Sheffield uh, Eagles women's team back then um we've kind of come full circle I suppose yeah. and uh, yeah, we were a second division team um, and they were, you know, struggling to recruit players. It was a girls team as well, actually, then, but um, n not really enough players for a women and a girls team. So we often had to kind of pinch the girls to play for the women. And I suppose when I started at 15, um, you know, starting... Uh, playing for the women straight away um, and I remember my I remember playing my first match and they stuck me on the wing and um, I, I'm not sure I even touched the ball <laughs> 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 that game I think I was just kind of making up the numbers and um, yet yeah, kind of didn't really know what was going on and uh, just got stuck in and, and tackled anything that moved that came near me um, but thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it and obviously then you know on a really steep learning curve and just became obsessed with it so you know every Friday night after training we were watching Super League on the TV me and my friend Vicky Brooks who was a standoff there uh, we would meet regularly after school and we'd go up to the park and we'd kick the ball around, throw the ball around, you know, everything. It was eat, sleep, breathe, uh, rugby. Uh, and, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. And, and then the team really grew uh, from strength to strength and we ended up um, playing in the um, final uh, at... Uh, Batley at Mount Pleasant and I remember that match because the, I don't think there was a blade of grass on <laughs> the pitch. Well, it used, to, it, used to be like, it used to be like a mud, it was just a mud bath. 
Well, I, no doubt it had been like a mud bath, but it was like, uh, it, I can't remember what time of year it was. It must have been towards um, kind of the end of the season coming into the summer because it was a really hot day. We had these re- long sleeved cotton shirts on that were really heavy and, and about, you know, three sizes too big. They'd all probably fit, you know, half Proper the old school there. rugby shirts. Old school rugby shirts, exactly that, yeah. Um, and yeah, there was not a blade, not a blade of grass. It was, it was just solid kind of mud that was like concrete. So it, it just took all of the skin off your knees. Uh, and um, I cut my eye open actually um, that game and, and got it stereo stripped and taped. So I've got uh, pictures of me looking a bit like Pudsey Bear. Um, running around, uh, having gone back on the on the pitch, but and we lost, we lost to York. Um, Julie Cronin, who again was one of the kind of was one of the women who went uh, on the 1996 tour uh, to Australia, uh, and uh, she was a formidable player, and her reputation preceded her. Um, and you know, so we'd always try and you know take her down. <laughs> If we could, um, but yeah, York. I, I, I can't remember the score. York beat us, but it was, it, it was a great occasion, and it felt like an occasion playing. I suppose, at, um, you know, a, a, a pitch that had a stand yeah. um, rather than you know just on some recreational park somewhere. Um, yeah, so it, it was a, a great time for me, and I, I learned. A, a a great deal and made some lifelong friends there. Yeah, we had a conversation with a, a, a current England international who was saying how crazy was it? But like six years ago, you might have an attendance between two top teams of 60 and it was a yeah. proper pleasure to play at a stadium. Yes. And now it's absolute norm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fantastic to see. I mean, when we had the the first you know the first World Cup here in two thousand, and uh, we made the uh, final against New Zealand, and I think the attendance there was about fourteen hundred. Uh, that was at, at Warrington at Wilderspool, and uh, we you know we were kind of blown away by the. 1400 yeah. <laughs> attendance. No, to, 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 to be fair, like 1400 is still a really good attendance. It is. I, yeah, I suppose. I suppose. But, you know, for an international, for a final, you know, for a World Cup final, 1400, yeah. whereas, you know, obviously the, the, the crowds at the recent World Cup, would, it was just so good to see. And I think that it, it's been such a great thing for raising awareness um, in, in, in this country and, and no doubt in others um, in relation to Women's Rugby League and what a great sport it is to, to come and watch. Well, I'll, I'll ask you this because we talked a bit off air. What was the build-up to your World Cup compared to what you've just seen in the last one? <laughs> um, well... Uh, hardly anything really in terms of the publicity hardly anything in terms of the amount of work that we did I suspect it's very similar because um, we had a a great team there um, both the players the the support staff um, we were were so lucky we had you know help from uh, people like I I tore my anterior cruciate ligament Ooh. prior to yeah uh, prior to the World Cup and if I basically if I had the operation to mend it it wouldn't have been repaired in time for me to play. Yes, you had to play so with it. Decision, yeah, exactly. Oh. So I made the decision to to, to play uh, and not have it repaired. <laughs> but I had uh, the help of uh, Patrick Moran, who was the um, physio at the Leeds Rhinos at the time and he was just amazing I, you know he's still you know a complete legend in my eyes because he made it possible for me to play in that World Cup um, so for me the build up was, was really intense loads of physio loads of you know rehab and working incredibly uh, hard at, at that time 
Uh, we had Simon Worsnop on board with us who had been at Sheffield Eagles, their S&C coach, when they uh, beat Wigan at the Challenge Cup final. Uh, and uh, he was providing us all with you know fantastic strength and conditioning programmes. It was a really, really professional outfit. I remember seeing psychologists and also, so we, no doubt, we were really ahead of our time, really. So I suspect in... in that way, the build-up was was similar, um, but obviously, in terms of the media, you know, we might have got the odd, you know, half a page mention in in some program <laughs> somewhere, um, and that was about it. It's uh, it is absolutely mind-boggling. So I've gone back. I've watched a lot of older matches of Great Britain because you can yeah. find. Very grainy, very definitely copied from a VHS onto <laughs> yes. the internet. And you know what? I'm gonna, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. The game then was as skillful and as good as it is now. Yeah. But you just have baggy T-shirts. Yeah, a hundred percent. Honestly, I mean, uh, when you look at that, you can see, you know, you can see the likes of Brenda Dobeck and she's, you know, she was such a fantastic playmaker. She had such a great vision uh, and understanding and um, that kind of rugby acumen. Um, she, yeah, she was she was absolutely fantastic. Um, I didn't have that rugby acumen, but I worked incredibly hard uh, yeah. um, and would kind kind of, you know, run at anything, through anything, tackle anything. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of uh, my my strength. And then, you know, the likes of Lisa McIntosh, um, you know, Jane Banks, big hits all day. She'd just run all day. Um, and, you know, you can, you can see the skill of these, these players. And I, I think you're absolutely right. When you listened to the commentary on some of those um, games, uh, the, the final that I was talking about uh, at Wilder School, you know, you can hear almost the shock in the commentator's voice. Oh, oh, that's quite a good time. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know what they Definitely were expecting. Like they, expect, they wasn't expecting to see that. Yes, yeah, I probably exactly. Expect, I don't think they was probably expecting to go there and see some sort of like slightly more aggressive game of tag. Yes, I think you're right. I, th I think that really, you know, listening back, gosh, I, I mean, at the time we were just so grateful that, you know, it was being recorded. <laughs> Um, but but listening back to the commentary and how you know it was treated, we were treated as such a novelty. Oh, these women can actually play, and you know, wow, uh, yeah, what what a shock! So, um, but but we could play, and I think certainly when I was kind of being interviewed back then, the questions I would get mainly were not about rugby. It would be, oh, you know. Uh, what do you do with your hair and you know it, it, kind of this kind of thing you know oh have you ever had any injuries to your face and you know, <laughs> what? Kind of, uh, you know questions that you'd never expect you know a male rugby player to be asked um but obviously that was kind of the novelty of it all i wasn't asked you know anything really about my, my you know how i played or um, my teammates and how the team had played or anything like that yeah it was all just the kind of novelty questions that wow have you injured your f what <laughs> oh what did you say to that how how do you respond to that Honestly, it's, it, it's absolutely incredible. Um, it, it, I've got some uh, newspaper cuttings. Um, and again, I was just so delighted that there was a little bit of publicity, a little bit of coverage that I didn't really notice it then. But when I look back now and read... Like, um, what, what were the, you asking me this for? Yeah, yeah, completely. You know, despite playing for, um, you know, five years, Rebecca still hasn't uh, uh, injured her face. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, really? <laughs> I'm going to say that that's a bad of some of the questions I ask as jokes. 
nearly, sure, nearly I'm as bad. I'm sure you could never ask any questions as bad as that. <laughs> no, that is, that is absolutely... So, like, uh, speaking off air, you, you, if you were playing, like you said yourself, 20 years too early. Yeah. <laughs> because you're someone who is comfortable talking. You was famous and known as a glamorous player as well. <laughs> yeah, they, that, that, it was my it was my nickname. I think now, and what's lovely to see actually is that again back back in the day, I would have been the only player to wear makeup. Really, um, they, you know, I used to get nicknamed lashes, and um, they. I was taken to Kangaroo Court in Australia on the tour in Australia um, because they said that I had too much makeup, and <laughs> you know, it was it was um, something that I would be uh, kind of mocked for. It was a, a joke amongst us all, and that was fine by me um, because I, you know, I, I was still going to put going out makeup on to play my international game you know and I was still gonna wear my mascara for training because I don't go out of the house without my makeup on so that was you know that was fine I came off you know with looking like a panda my hair was all over the place but that was fine um but um now I see that there are you know a whole host of different women some of them uh won't wear makeup some will wear makeup some will have the hair all beautifully plaited some will have and I, I love that kind of diversity that is um is more prevalent now uh it's nice to see that you know I would I wouldn't be the only one with with mascara on these days well, you do that then and you you, you've shown a bit of personality. You'll have definitely <laughs> stood out. Like, yeah, now now the, there is a lot of players who won't go, who, who don't, who play in mascara, who have the lashes done when they're playing because they're no one. Do you want to look good when you're photographed? Yes, you do want to look good when you're photographed. Do you want to yeah. feel good about yourself when you're going into anything? Of course you do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with that at all you know the two you know the two things aren't mutually exclusive um and that, you know again that's what i'm really loving about um the girls coming through playing rugby now what i love about rugby is that it, it's a sport for for everybody i think yeah. um you, you know you don't have to be a lot of a lot of girls Oh, it's such a difficult time, isn't it, for young kids at the minute? You know, there's this whole pressure to look a certain way, to you know, to be a certain size, and so so difficult. What I love about rugby is, whereas some girls might think, "Oh, I can't go to gymnastics," I ca or I, "I can't go running," because you know, actually, you can come down to rugby because it caters for all sorts of shapes. Sizes, That's everything. It. There's a position for everybody, everybody shape. You can exactly. be the tallest, the shortest, the heaviest, the lightest. There's somewhere but suits that. I, absolutely, absolutely. And I think then from there, the confidence that you um, you give to girls playing rugby um, is amazing because then you know actually, yeah. Okay, you know, I used to really struggle to get jeans that kind of fit over my thighs, and uh, you know, but it's like, yeah, but I've got really strong legs, and actually, I love my legs because they're really strong and they do a job, and, and you know, and, and, and now it doesn't, they don't have to look like sticks. <laughs> and now that's something that is like massively celebrated. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Like, exactly. I I remember. I, Worked, worked in fitness, that's how I ended up getting involved with this. And yeah. I remember when people, ah, I don't want to be, I just want to, you know, look, I want to be really, and now I speak to people, I know I want some size on my thighs, my, I want, and you're going, yeah. so basically what you're saying is, you want to look like an athlete. Yeah, yeah, isn't it great? I, I'm, I am loving that, to be honest, I'm really, really loving it, because back in the day, 
you know, when I'm doing power cleans and huge squats and, um, you know, all the rest of it, um, deadlifting, lots of weight because because it was functional and, and yeah. you and I, you know my traps were huge <laughs> um, used to be my party piece when I went out actually I'd kind of show off my show off my traps in the pub um, and I suppose be, uh, fortunately I was that type of person who was who was kind of confident but I remember at the time that was not the fashion at the time the, the fashion was the opposite of that you know Victoria Beckham in you know you know uh, jeans that you know she, didn't touch any part of her body because she was so thin and so I remember that I probably you know stood out that way but but I embraced that and it did give me uh confidence and I'm I'm so grateful for it because because now you know I can still go to the gym I still have um you know all those exercises and routines that I can call on and go to and uh you know it's it's something that you can do for life then because you've got that base and it's great that's it ladies love your body (laughs) yes you look better than you know (laughs) yeah whatever shape size whatever absolutely just embrace it so your career as a player finished in 2002 how how come you decided to retire young well it 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 was a really difficult decision as i said i'd obviously suffered the injury with my uh, acl so um that probably played a part but the the real reason was um i had started my career i was uh, i've become a barrister criminal barrister um and that involves an enormous amount of work that people probably don't see outside of court so there's huge amounts of preparation um you know every night basically uh, weekends lots and lots of work to do and so to fit that around my training schedule for great britain which also involved a huge amount of work evenings weekends etc i found it increasingly difficult in fact I nearly pulled out of going to Australia, and I am so grateful that you I got didn't. that in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I think it, it would have been one of my biggest regrets had I have, have done that. I'm so glad I went to Australia in 2002, and so I knew that that's where I wanted to um, kind of end my career. And what, I, what, what I a way to end it! What, what like what? Yeah. As a, as, a, as a way to be like, okay, I can't do this forever. I've got something to go on to. I've got a life I need to build. I've got a career that I really want and I've worked massively hard to do. And you must have seen that going, I can't really do it. And then thought, no, you know what? That's the one. Yeah, absolutely. I, that, that That is it. And I, and I just thought, you know, one, one last tour. <laughs> And I, like, as I say, I'm so glad I did. And uh, I, I physically left my Mizuno professionals. They were the boots of the day. Uh, my Mizuno professionals hung up in the Canberra Raiders uh, dressing room, which is where we played the final test uh, match. Uh, and that was that was me done. And I debated whether to continue playing at club level. And I. I just couldn't, I just couldn't kind of bring myself to not, you know, not be at that same level. And it, I'd only be given, you know, giving 75% and that's not in me, you know. <laughs> Everything I know, I have to give you 100%. So um, I just decided, yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's me done. Um, and I had to, you know, had to do, go for the day job. <laughs> That's, it's one of them things like if, you, if you're listening to this as a fan which hundreds of you are and there'll be hundreds of you worldwide who are listening as fans with no involvement because you're in countries but don't even have women's teams in England even to this day it is not professional it's not even close to being professional 
There may be a handful of people who are working in clubs and rugby league is their full-time job. But being a player is not a full-time job. Yeah. So the yeah. commitment yeah. is unbelievable. Uh, absolutely. And I think looking back now, you know, I have two kids now and looking back, I, you know, I thought I had it tough kind of studying and and doing, um, doing the... the Great Britain stuff, and uh, but really it pales into insignificance when I think about the women who had families <laughs> and jobs, and were still, you know, managing to get their training done, do the strength training in the week, do the conditioning in the week, make you know, travel to all over the country to meet up for Great Britain training um, on a on a Saturday, and then play the match wherever in the country that might have been. Um, then and uh, you know uh, it was a tremendous commitment for those women then as it is now you know there are still um, women playing for England who again have those commitments that they're working they they've got to try and fit all that around uh, you know training uh, ha household chores just you know the day to day stuff and it, it's so so difficult to then pull out that professional performance that they do uh, and we did um you know i think it, it speaks volumes for the level of, of of commitment that the women have got to the game and and that ought to be i hope in the not too distant future um you know something that that is recognized and, and changes and obviously we all hope that we uh, have some paid um kind of full-time professional uh, women we're getting we're getting closer um and you know i have very mixed feelings about um our women travelling to Australia, uh, you know, for professional contracts because whilst it's an amazing opportunity for them, and again, I wish that that had been something that was available to to us back then, it would have been an incredible experience. And of course, I wish them well. But what makes me sad is um, that is where they think they will learn more, be better. And I think we need to be providing that in this country, um, not having to travel to Australia to do it. That's it. The trajectory on the way the sport is, we could be there within five years. I'll put this out on there, and I said this at a time. Up until England women winning the Euros in football, women's rugby was the fastest growing sport Rugby League was the fastest growing sport in the country. We'll get back to that. We, we definitely, there's more media interest, there's more commercial interest, there's more everything's there. Yeah. I, I'm hoping if you're listening now and you're going, I need to go to Australia this minute, you know, I need to go young, I need to, you know, the, there are going to be opportunities. You aren't going to have to, I mean, yeah, what a life experience. If you went to me now, do you want to go play in Australia? I'll see you later. Go on. <laughs> no, so what, what's your involvement been pre-playing career? Um, so, um, I, do you mean after, after my... Yeah. After I've finished, after Finish, I've retired... Yeah. Well, yeah, well, to be honest with you, uh, it, it wasn't a great deal because, again, back then there wasn't the kind of structure that there is now. So it was, right, OK, I'm retired and got on with my work, got married, had kids. Uh, my focus has really been on my, my uh, career and, and my children and their sporting activities. Um, but uh, the World Cup has been like, a, a you know, a wonderful lease of life life for me as far as rugby league's concerned um and has really kind of brought me back into the to the fold so um i'm now sitting on the operational rules tribunal so that's uh, something that i'm really excited about and um yeah, uh, and really enjoying. And um, I am also uh, 
and this has just started. I've not really got going in this role yet, but been nominated for the representative for the representative of the Middle East and Africa um, in the Women and Girls Advisory uh, Group. So, the, uh, if I can kind of make. Um, you know, any type of impact in those countries, in those areas, really, um, you know, be the um, facilitator um, in terms of um, helping develop Women's Rugby League in some way. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be on board as far as uh, that's concerned. And I really loved, I was really lucky during the uh, Rugby League World Cup. Um, I was asked to do some um, media interviews, which I just absolutely loved. You know, I mean, it's an absolute joy um, being able to, to stand and chat about <laughs> about rugby league um, and you know together with some of my some of my idols uh, so that was a wonderful wonderful experience and then of course the um, the women in rugby league and life of the line fantastic lioness, yeah that that Julia Lee has uh, managed to produce and it's just oh it's absolutely amazing to to be recognised um, and for us to understand I didn't really appreciate. Um, what an important role me and my teammates played, uh, you know, along this kind of path of women's rugby league. And it was something that we did, something that we loved, um, something that we enjoyed. And, uh, you know, that, that was it really. It was something that I kind of put in a box and kind of not forgotten about because it's, it's such a huge part of who I am, those experiences. But um, this whole project that, that Julia um, has developed and uh, that Life with the Lionesses is just brilliant. And, it, and it's really enabled all of us to look back and think, yeah, wow, you know, we, we did do something you special, didn't see, we? You can see it in the, in the talks and the events. <laughs> in the events when you're talking, like, oh, my God, yeah. And you go, one person said to me, it was something fantastic. They went, the people walking the road for the first time don't realise they're laying a path for everyone who follows afterwards. Yeah, yeah, that is that's it in a nutshell. That is absolutely perfect way to describe it. We did not, we had no idea. We had no idea that you know we we were you know going to be part of, of this. And the way I look at it now is that you know kind of chapters in a book. We we were you know at the very start of this book, and we're probably you know a few chapters in now. I'm really excited to see you know how the story is going to develop and and you know and and continue through the through the chapters and hopefully as i say the women's game will just gain momentum and i think the world cup having it here was really important um for that and and you know just seeing one of the things one of the media things i did i, I went to um quite a few uh, amateur rugby league clubs and i went to haydock rugby league club and they've got um a girls team there they've in fact got two girls teams there because having started out i think with about six uh, girls the year before um word of mouth and you know uh girls had gone oh this is really great come down and more and more girls had started going to the club and they, all of a sudden they've got two amazing teams the girls are loving playing rugby and yeah it was such a special thing to see you know, compared to when when we were younger um, and, and and when we were doing it, where we were you know struggling to get players um, to to play, it's amazing to see. So, final little bits now. Interesting off there, you came out with something that's absolutely brilliant. Role models. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was something that at a, a recent uh, Q and A um, uh, 
session at uh, the Pontefract Museum, um, we, we were discussing with the life of the lionesses and we looked through uh, one of the um, programmes that we had from the 1998 tour to New Zealand and we were, we'd all been asked about who our, um, who our favourite players were and every single one of us had named a, a male player. I think mine was Gary Connolly. <laughs> Wow, Brian Connolly, um, wow. <laughs> that is a throwback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and um, and I and I but we it, it, we all we noticed it because of course we didn't have any female role models. We didn't have any women players to aspire to be other than say for example me coming into the GB squad in 98 you know some of the players who had toured Australia in, in 96 the, the likes of Lisa McIntosh and Brenda Dobeck who you know now in the in the Hall of Fame which is amazing but back then of course we, we just didn't have that and um what was just fantastic to see now is the number of female rugby league uh, role models that young girls have to to look up to. I saw something recently uh, on social media that um, signed photographs of the England players are being sold on eBay. <laughs> the, the women players, I mean, you know you've made it then, don't you? <laughs> so I, it's lovely that, that there are now these very visible female role models for girls to look up to and go, yeah, I want to be like that. And that will only nurture the grassroots um, level. It, it has to, and it, and it is. We can see that it is. Yeah, so you hit it on the head and it was fantastic. When I started doing this, all, every, all near enough, other than, say, people going, oh, I look up to Gemma Walsh, I look up to Andrew Dobson, it was nearly enough, wall to wall. Oh, it's Jamie Peacock, it's Kevin Sinfield, you know, it's X and Y, and they're all male. Now, yeah. I can't remember the last time someone turned around and said the, their favourite player was a male. Oh, it's amazing. That is just so good to hear. That's really great. But it, again, it's one of them. These players are walking down the path and they don't realise the, the road they're laying behind them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we I, absolutely. I, I, even now, I think, you know, um, it, it, it's still, isn't it? It's still quite a novelty. Um, and I think that the, they maybe don't kind of appreciate what they are doing for these young girls. I hope they do. I hope they do. Because, you know, with that also comes responsibility. Uh, it's lovely to see the time that the women take with their fans. You know, boys and girls, I think this is important to emphasise as well. You know, my little lad, he, he's 10. Um, he went to watch not the, the game at Warrington against France, not the last one, the one before the World Cup. And so he watched the men and also the women, and he said that he preferred the women's game. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think it's really important that we... You know, women's rugby isn't just for young girls. It's for boys and, and men and and women to go on, go and watch, you know. I think that's important as well. That's it. Teams now have dedicated fans who just turn up to the women's matches. Like, there's, there's a lot. There's, there's quite a few teams in West Yorkshire and you go to the, the women's matches and the same people there every single week a couple of hundred here a couple of hundred there and it is absolutely fantastic to see yeah yeah so in terms of role models and people to look up to which players you look up are you thinking at the moment who are you liking the look of there's some great uh, role models coming through now isn't that i mean you know the likes of tara jane stanley joan uh, jody cunningham who had fantastic um uh playing opportunities and fantastic performances in the World Cup and really kind of led from from the front. I, I think they're going to be a great, continue to be a 
a great inspiration for, for young girls and ones to watch because they, they always perform really well. And um, I, I also think that Charlie Blackburn at Featherstone is going to be one to watch. Um, I'm really keen to see how she progresses. I think she's playing really well at the minute. That's about as much time as we have now. Thank you for coming on. Is there anyone want to give a shout out to before you go? Oh, well, just thank you so much for having me on. It's been such a, a lovely experience. I love to talk about rugby. Um, but yeah, just um, I think give a shout out to the Sheffield Eagles women team, I think. Um, and I hope that they continue to do really well. They've got my full support and, and backing. Obviously, the GB girls, England girls, I should say now, the England girls and all my, uh, my ex-teammates. So thanks. Thank you.